Good morning and welcome to our Christmas special. So this is the Santa Christmas special where we pat ourselves on the back and we say we've had a very busy year and what should we smoke to, to celebrate? So I'm here with Larry the Window Cleaner, a.k.a. Thomas Stroker, all right, who's in his ridiculously stupid Christmas jumper. But there you go, all right. Christmas There's special. not that many Polish fashion designers out there or comedians, but he's tried to put two into one and come up with a Christmas fashion jokey statement. Anyway, so Thomas, what what, what have you chosen? Because it was your choice today. Yeah, because we were talking earlier on that we've just been here a year ago. Last year, we, what we were smoking? We were smoking private stock. That was private stock. It was yeah. just being released. And we were recreating the great photograph of Annie Lebovic with uh, Messi and Ronaldo. And Ronaldo. So today, something longer, something fatter. Something fatter that's 54. Something longer is 53. I think well, let's let, let let's let's go. You can go and do this choice. Let's do something longer. Then. Delicious. I have no idea what's coming out here. Oh, well, thank God it's not a... Uh, uh, thank God it's not a uh, Guantanamera or something like that. There's no Guantanamera in 53 Ringgate. I don't know, you might give me a little surprise. So... You, all right, so we are going to start with a Trinidad. No order in Trinidad. This is not a stock Trinidad. This is a Christmas Prezi. All right, to ourselves. You want me to cut myself? Yeah. This is a Trinidad. This is a pigtail. This is, I can pick the, t the tail. Ah, up. so you made me cut this cigar so you can give me a lesson. Yeah. So when you have a pigtail, all right, you just gently remove that. Use a little bit of force with your nail. All right, and there you have a pigtail cut. Unlike the circumcision to this poor cigar that young Tom. I couldn't do anything else because it's got a beaten cup. I would have removed half of the wrapper. Come on. So, what is this? Seven? Seven and a fifth, apparently. 185 millimeters. Why would you have seven and a fifth? Could you please explain, uh, explain that to me? Why they come up with because they don't come up with the Vitola in inches, Lawrence. They come up with the Vitola in millimeters. And it's 185 millimeter, which and make actually sense. How many other 185 millimeters cars are there? Not that many, probably no. none. But the whole point of the book is that they always create. So this one comes in what's called Habanos Colección, which is the, the books. Uh, can't remember how long they go. There were some, I think Quabo was the first one. Was it the last Christmas or birthday? Birthday. Mm. I really enjoyed this later. I Would really you like to borrow it? it? Yeah, because I think this is gone in its cold. It will take a second. It's very cold today. Now, you may think I'm mumbling, but I'm talking to you in a new language. It's called cigar. It just shows you that it doesn't matter how beaten the wrapper can be, the cigars are still going to be perfect. I like smoking beaten wrappers. I like it if the foot is damaged. Because I'm smoking it and I don't feel guilty about the fact that I have taken it out of stock that someone else could have bought. Any staff that are watching this, do not damage the cigars just to make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can I do that again? I do that with I mean, it's with enamel, so it, it doesn't have, the dink is not as loud, but it's still pretty, it's incredible. I mean, since I had that lighter, it's, um, I thought, ah, soft flame, you know. I hate those lighters, by the way. I wanted to get a Legron, 
because it's got a jet, but actually soft flame works perfectly. I hate those lights. Why? Because there is nothing worse than forgetting we put it in your pocket, arriving at Heathrow and Catwick Airport. I, if I'm going through wrong. going through security, no, they always nick that from me. They, and they argue, I, knowing that they can do it up and give it I've to I've done their, it this time when I was uh, going uh, to Singapore. And give it to their friends for a birthday or Christmas yeah, present. Yeah. I, nothing to do with the rules. I, so I normally travel with this because if they take it and give it to their friends, it's just advertising the store. Speaking of stolen lighters. I still light it every day. Do you know that? I've not I have the worst. I pick up a lighter and I just put it in my pocket. Yeah. It's just a, a natural reaction. Why do you think I would have food myself with you? Um, and uh, especially if I'm, yeah, especially if I'm in the shop, I steal the shop lighters. So, so I, I can't help it. I pick up a lighter, I put it in my pocket because it's a natural thing to do. So if you're short on the stock count of any of these Souter lighters, I upstairs there's a horde of them, an absolute horde. I because I never use them twice because I don't go out with them. I just take them. Then That's they terrible. run out of gas. Are you just getting one? No, 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 no. Then I take them back to Mount Street normally and I've got them to fill it up. Like a father Christmas. Yeah, with my little sack, sack. swag sack. So you you put your lighters in different places within your hand luggage, within your person, within that and the other. Because right. knowingly, especially if it's a flight over two hours, but when you come off that plane, you are just desperate. All right. And it's not because you're an addict. My name is Lawrence Davis, I'm a cigar addict. No, it's not because I'm an addict, all right. but it's just because I'm not allowed to. All right. But I'm now, done as we're disembarking the plane, looking forward so much to that smoke. All right. And if they're telling you a lighter, you've got a cigar and no flame. But that is a really frustrating situation. So That is a situation I struggle every time I come on airport. Because on the way out of Cuba, they take all your lighters. You're not allowed to go through. And then you have a cigar and there is a smoking lamp. And you have two hours to kill to your plane. And guess what? Nothing to light with. You, I mean, I, you can't buy it back at the other side. No. Not even in the duty free shop. No. So in the lounge they do have, but it's a electric, you know. So <laughs> it's for the cigarettes, so it's trying to light that up. Um, it doesn't really work. I've tried rubbing two sticks together. Yeah, it's also a very good idea. It didn't work. This is a very nice cigar. How many in the book? Twenty-four. How Four. unusual for seeing that, is it? Yeah, and the book is available when and where. Well, when did these have sold out now? But normally 2019. They... Yeah, but when did these come out? What... 2019, they were out on the market uh, 2021. That. Yeah, but when did these come and where did they go? Oh, um, so this is, this is only for uh, La Casa de la Habana. Only Casa de la Habana gets those beautiful books. I should have actually brought the book. But you can't read? Yeah, but there's not much reading in there. Well, it's Spanish? Yeah. Okay. So last night, I was at the, uh, the Bornsdale Cigar Awards. Yes. And they had some of the most weird categories. Cigar Sportsman of the Year. Well, it's not too more than it's up. Where is your trophy? All right. So Derek Tresor, you know, the boxer, is a good client of ours at the yeah. I mean, he's, he, you know, he didn't know why, why I won it. No one had really spoken to him. I'm smoking Surprise. downstairs. All right, with him. And um, another pal of mine was there. Obviously, the other nominee, Lawrence Delalio. I know Lawrence very well. I, I chaired his, uh, or co-chaired his, his big, Eight Rocks, which was his charity event, and we put it on a, the um, on Battersea, and I helped organise this whole thing. I, and I've known him all the latter part of his his life, and I've only ever seen him smoke a cigar once. 
So I can't quite see how he's qualified for that. Are Olympics. you saying that because you didn't win? And then they had a all right, chef, cigar chef of the year. That's interesting. Who won that? A guy called Turner. All right. The communications. Do you know a guy communications called Colin Cameron? No. No. No, no disrespect to Colin Cameron, he may be a fantastic journalist. But you've been in the cigar business a long time. I've been in it since God was a child. Mm. And he won the cigar communicator of the year. So that was Obviously we don't read enough, Lawrence. I thought I read everything there is about cigars that, that comes out. All right. Either we we co-authored it, or someone sends it to me just to say, no, 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 you don't, you know, you're not in it. So, I, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, no disrespect to him, but just some strange award segment, you know, segments. I mean, fantastic dinner. I'm going to take my hat off to Boys Dose. Right? Really going to take my hat off. There's so, uh, must be 200 and something people in the room. And the food was magnificent. I think we should put um, them in charge of making Habanos Festival. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I, I had a, a beef wellington, slice of beef wellington. Ample, good, enough portion. Right. The meat was absolutely perfectly cooked. The spinach was perfect. The mashed potato was perfect. And for when you're doing 200 plus people all in one go, that I think is a very, very difficult thing to do. It's just, it's just really far away, isn't it? Oh, it didn't take that long. An hour and 10 minutes in the car. I was very surprised. Last year you were crying two about hour, it. Two hours, 10 minutes last year. Mm. Shaved an hour off it this year. I got him back last night. I got the lovely Scott Vines from Tour Imports, a lift back because um, he stays in a hotel just down the road to me. And it took 40, 48 minutes. Yeah, there's no traffic. London is very good when there's no traffic. And it's very bad when there is traffic. It's horrendous. It's not very bad, it's horrendous. So what do you think of the cigar? So the cigar? It's a Christmas present. Thank you very much for uh, this Christmas present. We'll see um, you on a Christmas on a Christmas date. On a date, yes. She wouldn't be wearing that jumper if it wasn't a date. No, so we're on the, I'm wearing a suit to try and impress her. All right. So if we weren't on a date, all right, we probably wouldn't be smoking the cigar. So it is sort of very Christmassy. Mm. Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. Have you listened to Magic Radio lately? Because they only play Christmas songs for the whole month of December. Now, for the first day, it's great, all right? But when what? you come home and all you can hear is, all right, these Christmas songs but buzzing in your ear, all right? It's, Maria Curry? Ah, oh, I've got, no, the worst one is, all right, is having Slade and running around your head. Oh, here it is, Merry oh Christmas. Oh my God, no, no. All right, and that's buzzing around you. It's 11.30 at night, you're getting out the car, from boys dolls, all right? You want to sit down and relax and you've got not be older <laughs> buzzing around in your brain singing, here it is, Merry Christmas. And that's the way you arrive home, singing? No, it's, I'm not singing, it's just there in your head. Yeah, yeah, just lives rent free, right? <laughs> Completely, I mean, if I could get rent for it, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't mind. Um, so, cigar? So far, excellent. Excellente. I personally think it's a, a great size. I know it looks small because the relative nature of seven of the, and anyone should be very, very, very pleased if you've got seven and a fifth, right? Seven and a fifth. Right. I so, have a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking cigars, you have to be smarter. <laughs> Um, please, God, I should answer. Anyway, um, 
But I think in a 53 ring gauge, it's the right level. You wouldn't want it in any bigger. I think it would be too monster-like. Yeah. And could be a workout uh, lifting it up. So it's really not far away from, um, from Julieta, from Julieta number two from Churchill. But actually increasing the ring gauge from 47 to 53 did make a difference. It's much better. The general feel when you smoke a cigar, it just it's feels... Cooler. It's a cooler smoke. 47 does feel 47 to 7. I mean, this Vitola, I'm glad Hunters uh, did Polaranyaga 47 this year uh, and, uh, and, and reviving the Churchill Vitola because Churchill Vitola is slowly dying. I mean, the. Well, there is only three uh, Churchills around now. A Splendido Churchill. There's the Splendido. There's Churchill. There's the Romeo and Juliet Churchill. And the Polaranyaga 47. Oh, yeah, but that's original. Yeah. yeah, but there's only three of them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, are, oh, there is another one. A. Chapman, Sir Winston. Haven't seen that. That's but it, it, it is still it in is there. It's still there, yeah, yeah. It's still there, but, it, but it's probably rarer than Paul Aranaga 47. It's rarer than anything I've. Yeah. So there are only three Churchills on the market. There are other Churchills on the market coming short. All right, petty. I mean, you have the, a lot of regionals in the in that Vitola because I think a lot of distributors are missing those Vitolas. What regionals just, have you got those Vitolas at the moment? There was a Quedorce, uh, the French one, Clemenceau. That was a good That Clemenceau was, yeah, that was a couple of years ago. Um, I'm sure there were a few years. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're going for the 47 ring cake. And I think the Churchill is, is a great cigar. But the book, they're always special. And we did keep it for our Christmas date. So what's it, this one called, so everyone knows? That's Trinidad Casilda. Casilda. Yeah. What does Casilda mean? Trinidad Casilda, Casilda is a place close to Trinidad, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Look it up. I'm gonna look it up. Google. Casilda is the is the small city close to Trinidad, I remember. Um, so as you go to Playa Al Ancon, it's the next turn. So there you are. That's where Casilda is. It's just south of Trinidad, right by the coast. So you've got so the cards, actually, bad choices. What are you going to hit me with? Have you ever been cut off at the bar? Never. Never? Never. Never. It's like, Mr. Davis, I think you had enough, it's time to never, go. Never. Never. Never, never, never. Really? Yep. It happened to me only once. In Havana. And it wasn't my fault. Next question. Hmm. Have you ever made a New Year resolution that lasted less than a week? <laughs> I think I know I've never know. made a New Year's resolution that's lasted well, longer than a week. <laughs> but do you make New Year re resolutions? All the time. Why? I Why? don't understand the idea Why of the New Year re resolution. Because it's the euphoric nature of a New it's Year. Just coming, everybody's. Coming I'm a real it's new, just another day. I'm a, I'm a New Year Grinch. I, I hate New Year's Eve parties where you go and there's like millions of people you've never met before. All dressed up, looking absolutely stupid in their the, the attire with the funny hats on and Happy New Year, this, that, and the other. And the, the ball comes spinning down. All right, happy. right? No, and the ball comes spinning down, and these people you've never met jump up and hunk you, right? And I like kiss you. Is it, uh, please, please. Uh, go on. Well, I'm not a fan of the New Year's. First of all, you're paying five times for what you're getting. Um, and th there is always this high expectation. It has to be, you know. It, it's the no, same. no, no. They put on that band, the band that no one else, no one else had the balls to sign for the night because they're that bad. And also, you have. It, I would say even the same about Christmas. You know, Christmas. I've noticed recently. I just want to be properly off and like go off grid. You know, go to Scotland, disappear for a week. Because Christmas, it's, I don't know how it was at your place. My place was always cleaning, cooking, more cleaning, more cooking. My mom would Listen, cook I, for I, a week. I'm Jewish. Yeah. 
right? So we don't celebrate. In the same uh, In the so same way. Had a however, no, however, all right. Being Jewish, we uh, being a Jewish school kid at the time, we celebrated anybody's, right? It could be Christmas, we took Hanukkah, we took every day off that we could possibly think of. At one time, I, t I, I, I told the teacher, I said, do you know, I think my mother's having an affair with an Indian. And, and because of it, I think I'm just off. the off. It didn't work, but it was a good try. Right. So, you know, do I like Christmas? Yeah, I do like Christmas. I like Chris opening Christmas presents. I like opening any presents, to be honest. All right, if anyone feels the need all right, to, to open presents, I think I'm up in the top ten. I love the idea of it. I love London during Christmas, when it's empty. I hate London during Christmas. Dri I won't you, be, I you never, don't like driving on a Christmas day? I never like being in London because I have to then invite all my family over. Half of them I don't like, half of them don't like me. All right? and, then I've got to, and I've got to serve them food and be their, their waiter. Just hide, turn off the light. No, no, so what you do is you go away, like, go somewhere nice and warm, lie on the beach, all right, and just and at least 10 hours away so they don't come with you. Yeah. Okay. Any more for any more? <clears throat> yeah, do you complain a lot about first world problems? I think he just did. I complain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, you've literally just answered the, um, that's a, that's a deep one. Would you rather be rich than happy? I'd like to be rich and happy. But I'd rather be happy and poor than rich and miserable. I think the same. I've seen uh, people that are, have more money than sense and they're miserable. They're really not happy. So I would rather be happy. Ooh, that's a good one. Have you ever had a drink thrown in your face? Yes. I knew it was going to be the answer. Yes, many times. Many times? Yeah, many times, but I was single. I have never had a drink thrown in my face. No. Okay. Tell me at least one of them. One what of them. You, what did you do to deserve that? Did oh, uh, actually? Let's not go into the detail. Did you deserve it? No. Okay. That's that's fair. <laughs> um. Do you shave your genital area? No. Ever. Ever. Save the rainforest. Do you think you're the finest person in the room? No. No. Okay. He always says I'm not funny. Oh, the funniest. I thought funniest. you said the finest. No, funniest. Sometimes. Sometimes. With you, definitely. <laughs> in the room. <laughs> In this room at the moment, without any shadow of a doubt. Yeah. We should get you a, like a, a stand-up. I've done stand-up. You've done stand-up? Yeah. But I did it at school in, in my, in my uh, school shows. I would love to see that, if there is a, is there a recording. Right. But there is a one photograph, by the way, I have to ask your dear wife. I would love to see that you said there is this one photograph that exists and it lives, that photo it lives in my head rent free. Charge, charge and rent for it now. Yeah, incredible. Have you ever <clears throat> sent embarrassing text or email to yeah. a wrong person? I've done it loads of times. What do you do at that point? Because I just laughed. I've sent once and you know, a very honest opinion. With me. You've got it. <laughs> All right. It was to it was to the people from uh, I can tell you it's the people from that um, El Septimo, yes. right? Thierry de, de uh, Rafael is a very nice guy actually. Mm. I and I sent you a copy of his email to me with some. I sent the wrong on. reply button. All right, and you asked me. I asked you what what do you think of these, uh, and you wrote, you wrote back there all oh, shit except. It was it. a very honest opinion, and I didn't know I sent it to a wrong person until I got a reply from him a week later. <laughs> At which point, I just start laughing. It's like, what do you do? It's already out there. It's like, you, you fucked it up. That's it. Well, 
I mean, my father tells a great story, all right, that when he was about 26, he was out in the park with his, all right, and he saw his mate who hasn't seen, hadn't seen from since school. And he said, hello, Mick, how are you? I'm there, all right. I said, yeah. I said, they started reminiscing. So, whatever happened to that, that bird, Beryl? Everyone had sex with Beryl. Whatever happened to him? He said, I married her. <laughs> you know, there's those sort of things that, you know, Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I've been round at four on Thursdays, that's my slot. <laughs> so, Casilda, almost done. Fantastic, Spike. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. We've been, we've been filming for over an hour, but I, got, I would say this cigar needed to have it just as done. It's not something that you can... Um, Talk about for 20 minutes and then put it down and start the next one, is it? Let's talk about flavour. Mm -hmm. Slightly milder than most, than most trim deads. I would say a lot milder. Um, Not as spicy. I mean, there is a ton of flavour. Yeah. It's just so... Very subtle. So, so delicate and smooth and easy going. What would you drink with that? Ooh. You know, I'm not a red wine drinker, but for some reason this cigar makes me think of red wine. So I think this cigar makes me think of a glass of champagne. I don't know for why, because I'm not really a big champagne drinker. I'm not a wine drinker. No, no, you... So be careful with Twin El Casilda, it makes you want to do things that you usually don't enjoy. Well, this man doesn't understand that anything with only 14% ABV. And it makes me think of a red wine. That's good. Red wine just puts me to sleep. Oh, that's, you sit more often then. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said to myself. So, my only reflection on that cigar is... What do you think of the quality of the build? The quality of the build is superb. Look at it. My only reflection on this sort of cigars is that we keep them to a special moment. Why we tend to smoke something very special? Because it's expensive and you feel that because it's expensive, it should be for something special. But then you smoke it and it's, it's great, but it's a cigar, isn't it? Absolutely. That is the one thing that you can always serve. A woman is, is a woman, but a cigar is a good smoke. It is. Who was that? Of it. I have no idea. I think that was Kipling. When someone says, what is the nicest cigar you've had recently? Right? Well, I tend to think it was the last one I've smoked. I would usually say the same, you know. It's, um, it's, it's never about a cigar. It's about a moment. Who you're with, where you are, what you're doing. It's never about a cigar. I remember smoking the Cojiba Grandioso when it was first released and it was a big thing for me. But I've smoked it in a very cold room among the people that not particularly I wanted to be with at the time. I gotta tell you, I don't even remember what it tastes like. I remember rubber exploding because the difference of temperature was so big uh, and it wasn't a particularly not nice one, but yesterday I shared a very nice conversation with the guys in the lounge and I smoked a Polaranica Petit Corona. And I thought that was lovely. Let's give it some ratings, come on. Rating? Rating. This cigar makes me feel like a million dollars. It's a thing, it's, it, it's the same. A so if I give you two, I, could we split it a million each? Exactly. But do you, I don't know if you get that, for example, with a Lancero, because you don't like the small baguette, but the Lancero is this elegant cigar. And for some reason, the length in that cigar and the presentation from the book and all that, it just... I, I, find, I know I'm wearing a shitty jumper, but it I makes find, me feel I find smoking Lanceros right, a bit too feminine for me, even though I like the taste. And I don't mean that in any detrimental way. I just find it a little bit thin, all right? And some people say that I've got a big mouth, all right? And I just doesn't... Half the enjoyment is the amount of smoke and the rest of it. So, 
I'm not, but I do like the taste of them. All right. Okay. If I had to rate it, I would say this is definitely not the best cigar I've smoked this year. I can't remember that. Um, what else? No, there, was something is else. There. there was something else that we were smoking. That the we Linea Maestro. <laughs> no, Linea Maestro, that was one of them, but Siglo d'Oro. Siglo d'Oro. I would this say a, the problem that this, and Linea Maestro were two best the, the cigars problem, I've The problem with the Siglo d'Oro is that it's a little bit like going to a lap dancing club, isn't it? When you're getting in the groove, the music stops. And you've got to play again. Yeah. But it is tasty. Oh, beautiful taste it. Just do with another ring. That's, that's what the actress said to the bishop. Well, what's your top three cigars that you've smoked this year? If we're doing... Let's do your top three. Your top three destinations when you've been this year, your top three cigars, your top three restaurants. What do you eat? Top three cigars this year would be the Monte Cristo 520. Yeah. No, I, the Capidos was a great cigar, but it's not, it's not on that. It's not on that on the time list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I would have to say the Cohiba Sublimes 2004. When did you smoke that? I smoked that at dinner with a friend of mine who gave it to me. Thanks for the invitation. Well, I didn't know he was popping it out. Okay. And that was in the south of France, and uh, there's no, I'm not going to mention his name on, on screen, but you know who it was. And the third? And the third, I think, was here, was the Linea Maestro. Linea Maestro? Yeah, but I had the best one. You did? Yeah, I think that was fantastic. So this one, I would, I would say? Probably, probably fifth. I go Cupidos and then this. Mm. Best three meals I've had this year. Uh, a meal I had in, I loved Ischia. I had a meal at the top of the mountain of the monastery. I had a linguine, had a linguine um, vongoli mm -hmm. that was probably up there with some of the best food I've ever had. And it was 11 euros. Second best meal I think I had, a place Anita took me to, Anita from uh, from the Casa della Bella in, in Napoli. Mm -hmm. She took me to this restaurant and we had a pizza there. It was the finest pizza I've ever had in my life. And that was mainly myself, two glasses of Prosecco. Um, I think it was 30 euros for the to just knock out. It's not the, the money. And... Uh, then it's a toss-up between two restaurants. One is my one of my favourites called Lura, which is in Seymour Place. It's a, a North Galician Spanish restaurant that I've got the most crazy, crazy uh, food there. They have the, the best tomatoes I've ever tasted in my life. Mm -hmm. They also have the best cheesecake in the world. Okay. Uh, and then they have bone marrow, which is just... You either like bone marrow or you don't. If you like it, it's amazing though. Three top holiday destinations that I've been to this year, I would say as follows. I, number one, I love the Four Seasons at Charles Shekins. My favorite, I can't go this year because of the troubles that there are in the Middle East. Uh, second, um, I took my wife to a hotel called the Punta Rossa in um, Italy um, and we went back there and we hadn't been there that's what I proposed to her 35 years ago absolutely fantastic the place called San Felice Cicero up on a mountain I right, walked down about 600 steps to get to the, the rocky beach and you've got two sunbeds on the rocks and just dive into the sea fantastic and uh, the third be best destination wasn't a hotel. It was where I had the meal, staying with Julian Posner in his house in the south of France, 
What a fantastic time we had at a most amazing meal. The wines. Yeah, we had a Haubrion. Chateau Haubrion and then we had a Chateau de Cam. And it was just amazing. It was just phenomenal. So there you are. Let's go. Mr. Davis's year wrapped in five minutes. So overall this cigar? Yay, nay? Yay. Yay, yay. Nine out of ten. Okay. The arch was great, the combustion was great, the burn was great, the build was great, the taste was great. Different taste to what I thought it would be. Completely different. What do you thought it was going to be? I thought it was going to be a bit spicier and a bit... It's quite refined, huh? It's very refined. I would drink it with a Runyard Blanc de Blanc. That would be my first choice. And I would have it with a, a nice bottle of... I think the Varela would over... Overkill it. I don't know, maybe because I'm a philosopher, but it just makes me think of the red wine. But um, I'm not going to go as high as you. I, I, I think I'm going to go eight. Um, it's a great cigar. I think that's mean. Maybe it's mean, but... I think my expectations were higher than that, for some reason. Price. Unfortunately, that always gets in the way, doesn't it? Yeah. Even that I'm the first one who tells you and so, the guys uh, take look, the price. We don't sell it's it. It's difficult. We it's haven't got it All right. in, in the books. But what is a book today? 15? Between 15 to, to 30,000 pounds. All right. It goes down to a six if you look at it on price. On that note, I would want to wish you all right, a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays if you're not celebrating Christmas. A great new year. Let's hope 24 holds out good things, health, wealth, happiness, a but great more the important thing. All right, great cigars. Great cigars. Because you can always buy crap.